Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Mmm, yeah, you like that? You like that? Because you've been re-watching this on Netflix, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. Relive my childhood for me. Today, I want to talk to you guys about how to use underglaze and make silkscreen designs much like this. But before I go to this stage, I want to show you how I got here. So not only am I going to show you guys how to actually do this technique, it's super easy. It costs way less material than you would think. I'm also going to show you all the super non-functional ways that I did this before I figured out the ultra-functional way to do this with underglaze. First, I got to take these away, though, because if I just like show you what I'm doing down here, you're just going to look at these the whole time and you're not going to learn anything. So is I'm taking your eye candy away. For quite some time before I opened my online store on my own website, I ended up going to anime conventions because your boy is a giant weeaboo. And also because I'm a ceramic artist, sooner or later those two worlds collided and I ended up making Avatar The Last Airbender tumblers much like this. I made a bunch of them. I made earth, I made fire, I ended up making water, and sometimes I made air but I lost it because it was the last one I had. It was, it was, it was the last airbender. <laughs> no, but seriously, I lost it. I have no idea where it is. Ooh. The way I achieved these designs were actually extremely simple. I took a super basic form much like this, a tumbler form as I mentioned earlier. I would get a slab of clay and roll it out into one of these. Get a little tiny stamp that I bought from an online distributor and just press it into the slab that I've made very hard. And when it came out, I ended up with something much like this. I would get my potter's knife, cut little squares around this, much like this. And this is how I got the majority of my stamps to go on clay. After this, I would just turn it around, score both sides right here, right over here, put this right on here with some slip, and slow dry it and have it attach over time. But the problem was this was heavily inefficient as I would have to waste extra clay, and I would sit here with like a myriad of stamps, just kind of doing this all day long, producing a bunch of these. So over time, I decided to incorporate them into my mugs instead of just my tumblers. And sooner or later, I got to this phase right here where the lines were a lot cleaner, a lot crispier, and everything was nice and smoothed out with the correct color in which it was supposed to be. The Earth Nation was on green, the Water Tribe was on blue, the Air Nomads were white slash very light pink, and the Fire Nation was of course really super fiery red. And technically speaking, these were made the same exact way as these ones were. I would basically wait until this was in the leather soft to leather phase, go ahead and roll the slab out, put a stamp on here, although I would use a bigger and different stamp, and just attach it in the leather to leather soft phases and let them slowly air dry as product. But here's the thing, after doing this for so long, I thought to myself, well, there's gotta be more to life. Over time, the designs got better and better because you can clearly see I put underglaze on the inside of the designs. Otherwise, it would just be green all over instead of green with a very nice highlight in the middle like this. This technique was very appealing for me and people like me who use stamps because all you gotta do is throw a form, make sure it's in the very leather soft phase so it dries over time as you're working on it, make sure you wrap them up, maybe even spray them with a little bit of water every now and then roll out a giant slab and just start making stamps over and over again. You put one here and that's one of your cups. And then you put one here and that's two of your cups. You can essentially make as many of these cups as you have as you can on one big slab. I've even done like 20 of these things before. And after a while, I got really tired of doing this for multiple reasons. Number one, this design is extremely clunky. It's really just a giant stamp right on a cup. Number two, this took a pretty large amount of clay. If I made 20 of these types of mugs or tumblers, I would have to take maybe five or 10 pounds of my clay and just kind of let it dry out as I go ahead and do this over and over and over again. I have the choice to work really quickly, of course, but it still doesn't get rid of the fact that I'm gonna have to spend a lot of clay. I mean, what do you think happens to all the excess? I'm just recycling it pretty much. So after a while, I wanted a way around this. Hey! Enter the underglaze years, where I found a way to get a stencil or a symbol and just put it through underglaze in order to make this nice design without any of the heavy bulk and wasting tons and tons of clay and glaze. Look, this is super clean. This doesn't get in the way of anything, you can still use it functionally, and I don't really have to do as much work as I was doing before. You stay on there, Fire Nation, why are you always the trouble causer? 
where not only did I not have to waste a bunch of time because my stuff was no longer time sensitive, I also didn't waste a bunch of clay, and I also didn't have to sit here night after night. This was a much more expedient process. I did all this with a little trick called silk screening. Now, if you already know what silk screening is, you're probably familiarized with it through using it on t-shirts and whatnot, making maybe like your high school graduation t-shirts. You can probably make your own silk screening kit at home and just kind of silk screen whatever designs you want on there. But I found somebody who prefers professionally mix silk screens and just ask that person to make whatever designs I wanted. After that, I pretty much just treated my underglazes like I would silk screen techniques on a t-shirt. I just used it on my cups instead. And it's actually super easy. Let me show you how I did it. Now here are the things you're going to need to actually start silk screening images, no matter what the image is. I have a bunch of them. So here's our stack of silk screens right here all nice and neat. I'm also going to need a bucket of water. Please, person who's editing the video, could you like put one up here somewhere, please? Ah, yes, the YouTube movie magic. You're also going to need some underglaze. I prefer to use black as my clay body is white. And whenever I have a darker clay body, I prefer to get a white underglaze. You can use blue, yellow, red, whatever you want. I just prefer to use black and white simply because it looks a lot more better with the contrast. Maybe a little brush in order to mix around the glaze, which you will need to do. And the one thing that you're probably going to need because it makes the job way easier is Mako AC310. It is specifically made for silk screening. I think Mako realized a long time ago that people are starting to use silk screening techniques on their stuff. So they made some of this stuff, which is basically a glaze thickener, in order to make this job a lot easier. You don't technically need this. I will make a video on how to do it without this at a later time. But this, especially if you're a beginner at doing this, is going to make it way easier for you. And the last thing that you're going to need is a blank version of whatever you're going to be putting this stencil on. Now, a little warning here. If you try and put these silk screens on something that doesn't have a flat surface, maybe something like this, or maybe even something like this, it's going to be a little bit difficult. You can't really do it too well because in order to paint a flat picture with your silk screen, you're going to need a flat surface. So it's way easier to do it like this, especially if you are a beginner and you're not like super advanced at silk screening than it is anything else. There's a reason why silk screening works so good on like flat t-shirts. It has a nice flat surface for the image to come out nicely on. But I heavily suggest you don't try this for your first time. For now, you can put the bucket of water to the side because it's really just meant for cleaning off your silk screens after you're done with them. And that's about it. Firstly, start by getting your underglaze and just pouring it directly into wherever you're holding your paint or glaze. This is super easy to do because now I can work on four different colors and four different stencils and whatnot if I feel like it. So I like using these instead of just one basic little cup, right? You don't really need that much glaze because technically speaking, you're not going to be using a gob of glaze. You're only going to be using as much glaze as one design takes up, which is a very little amount. So you don't have to fill like two or three of these. You just have to use maybe a half or a third of a little cup here. For example, this bottle will last me almost forever, like probably a hundred pieces as far as this silk screening technique goes. So I wouldn't really worry about using too much glaze here, especially because our next step is to use a thick you see this? You see how it's all wishy-washy movie around dude doing the footloose with the young kids? You don't want this. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your silk screen medium, which is AC310 from Mako, and you're just going to sprinkle a little bit of it in there as if you were using table salt. Take your brush that I mentioned earlier and just start kind of mixing it in. The key here is to get it to the consistency of thick peanut butter. That seems to be the kind of defining factor for me is to get it kind of thick, but also not make it so thick that it's like gum. If you've gone to gum, you've gone too far. But if you're going to thick peanut butter, well, that should be just enough. Potter tip. While you're mixing this into your glaze, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, this really, this really isn't getting any thicker. It's just getting kind of clumpy. It's not that great. This silkscreen medium, AC310 from Mako, it takes a little bit of time to set up inside of the glaze. It's kind of like cornstarch. Cornstarch doesn't just like, isn't a food safe thickener and just thickens things right away. It takes a little bit of time to set up. So don't go ahead and mix this in and just keep adding more because you think it's immediate thickener. Just leave it alone for about five or 10 minutes. And then if you need to be thicker, add a little bit more and repeat this process until you get it 
a little bit thicker. On the reverse side of that, if you get it a little too thick, you can always just add more glaze. But at a certain point, you will be wasting glaze because you don't clearly need that much for like maybe four cups. There you go, that's not too bad. You see, the point in which I like it personally is where I can kind of pick it up with my brush, but it still drops very, very slowly. And this to me is the consistency of thick peanut butter. Now this part's a little bit weird because technically speaking, there are two sides to your silk screen. I know it doesn't look like it, but there is. There's the matte side, which is just kind of like the regular side. And then there is the shinier side. It's a very difficult to see the difference in between the two, but the way I remember it is because one side feels way smoother than the other side, and that's the shiny side. So this here is the shiny side, and this here is the matte side. You wanna put the shiny side down. I can also kind of remember this because the symbol on my other cup, I specifically made with the shiny side down, so I can kind of line up the pattern here, so I know that this is the correct way. But this side is the shiny side, see it? And this side is the non-shiny side. I'm trying to hold it up to the light so you can see it. So before you go ahead and apply this, make sure the shiny side is down. Your next step is to take your cup, put it directly on top of your cup like this, and hold it down on at least two sides. I like to kind of straighten it out before I do this and then hold it down very roughly without getting in the way of the pattern. What you really want is the least amount of crinkles in the actual silk screen itself. After this, go ahead and put it down on a stable surface. I'm just going to put it right here for you and pick up a little bit of this thick glaze with your finger. Now this part's going to take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're new, because on this part, you want to press fairly hard on the design. You see, the entire point of silk screening is that whatever color you have on this is going to go through these little perforated silk screen holes, but it's not gonna go through the rest of this shiny or semi-matte part. This is what usually ends up making these designs right here, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna press with enough pressure to push this thick glaze through the screen like this. It'll end up looking like a little hosh posh. It'll end, up, it'll end up kind of looking like this for a while until you end up peeling it off. And when you peel it off, you should have quite a nice design there. Now, if you've done it perfectly, which I mean, this time I did it perfectly, but this time is not super perfect. You shouldn't have any of these little extra marks on here. But if you do, you can very easily just get a sponge and wipe them off. You do have to remember it's underglaze and underglaze comes off fairly easily. It's not like if you mess it up one time, you just have to start all over. You can simply wait for it to dry, but you kind of only have one shot to make the initial design on there. If there's a little bit of mess afterwards, you can just kind of wipe that off with a little bit of water. But if you actually mess up the entirety of the design, you're going to have to wipe off the entire thing and start all over. This is what most people are looking for when they're doing this technique. They're looking for a very nice, clear image with really crisp lines. This is an indication of two things. Number one, my underglaze is thick enough, and number two, I'm putting the correct amount of pressure. That being said, there are indicators that these two things are not happening, but it doesn't really compromise the image itself. This is the same exact image, and your brain can clearly tell what it is under context, but you can kind of see where it bled out a tiny little bit. While it did leak over a little bit on this side and bleed over a little bit on this side, this is still a good image. But if you're getting this, it's a sign that either your underglaze is not thick enough or you're not putting on enough pressure. Or the third one, which is a little bit rare, sometimes as you're doing the technique, you're running over one singular spot way too often. Tiny little hard circles are what you kind of need for this technique while you're doing it. But that being said, I kind of like the fringe look that this has over this. It, while yes, this is cleaner, this is clearly more artistic in a certain sense and I don't think any one of them are really wrong in a sense so take that with a grain of salt but this is a sign or an indicator of those two things not thick enough 
or not enough pressure. This is where the bucket of water comes in that I had mentioned earlier. Number one, you're gonna need this to wash your hands off afterwards because, well, you're gonna kinda get dirty and get this underglaze under your fingernails and whatnot. But number two, you do not want to abuse these silk screens. They're made of silk, they're quite fragile. And what I usually do in order to clean them, as I was instructed, is I just dip them in some water and leave them there. Usually the underglaze comes off very naturally by just swishing it around a little bit, but you don't want to manhandle these things. Let them stay in water when you're done using that specific design, clean them off, and use them again. And that's pretty much it. It's actually extremely easy to use these silk screens. You can do anything from super small to super big, but the main key is that you want to get a handle on them on a very flat surface, much like these ones here, before you move to a larger surface. This technique is also preferred for me over the stamp technique I explained to you earlier because you don't have to do this in the greenware phase. See this right here? This is greenware. I can technically still make little dents in it because it's freshly thrown. It's like leather right now, but that means that if I want to attach any of these symbols to it like I showed you earlier, I'm going to have to do this real fast and then slow dry it. With this, not only are there no cracks, you can also do this as I've been showing you on bisque work. See, no marks. This has gone through the kiln one time already. So you can technically do it both on bisque work and greenware work, as long as you have the correct type of underglaze. Just make sure to read the back of the bottle every time you get a bottle of glaze, because some glazes are meant to be used in bisque, some for greenware, some after the bisque, you know, you, you never really know. So make sure you get the right kind. But now my work is no longer time sensitive. If I wanna take this greenware work over here and make a white lotus symbol on it from Avatar The Last Airbender, I totally can. You see, this is the reason why I prefer silk screening over using stamps or extra clay or doing something like that. I don't use a bunch of extra clay. I save a lot of time. I can basically control any color I want, contrast the colors, work around the colors. I can make something green, blue, red, gray if I felt like it. And it's not time sensitive. I can do it on bisque and I can also do it on greenware. I'm not gonna tap that, that is greenware. Are you crazy? No, I like this, I'm keeping it, it's for me. Why would I tap it like that, you're crazy. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I just wanted to show you guys the progression of how I got to this stage in my life. And I also wanted to show you that once you get the system down of like adding thickener to glaze and then getting your silk screens set up, it's actually super easy to make these types of things. Of course, I've always been a massive fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm not just doing it now because it's on Netflix. Hey, even, even my channel is technically named after Avatar The Last Airbender. So, I mean, it was kind of inevitable that I would show you guys this in the first place. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. I have the new website slash store that's down there. I have my Instagram and I also have my Facebook page so that you can keep up with all my artwork. But if you want to keep up with videos like this, go ahead and tick tickle the subscribe button. You know, click notifications while you're down there. Go ahead, ding, jingle the bell. Go ahead, test the bell a little bit. You like it, you little pervert. That being said, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Hopefully your next art project come out fantastic and I will see you dirty potters next week.